Coalition and so many others that have gathered on this International Human Rights Day to speak truth to power, to bring an end to the bloodshed and the atrocities in Darfur. You're going to hear from a lot of speakers today, and many will lay out both the deteriorating crisis in Darfur as well as the moral imperative that has surrounded this crisis since it began. We have been witnessing a genocide in slow motion. And yet this time around, the world cannot plead ignorance. And that includes China, a country that you've heard has such inordinate influence over the future of Darfur and Sudan. A country that it sits on the, on the International Security Council, human right, or the UN Security Council, and they can play a decisive role in influencing Ch uh, Sudan to stop this genocide. In Chinese, the word for crisis has two roots. One means grave danger, and one means opportunity. And we already know what the danger is, what it has been for the people of Darfur. You've heard over 4,000 people killed, millions upon millions displaced from their homes. But there's also an opportunity in the midst of this crisis. That if China takes its leadership role in pressuring the Sudanese government to allow the deployment of a robust and significant UN or joint UN after Union peacekeeping force. Not only can we see the restoration of security in Sudan, but we can start to lay the pavement for an ongoing peace process. But the opportunity is that out of the ashes of rape, of bloodshed, of untold atrocities, a new Sudan could rise up that is multiracial, that protects the rights of all of its people. Genocide in Sudan makes a mockery of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. And many of you know that the theme for this year's Human Rights Day is dignity and justice for all of us. Dr. Martin Luther King once condensed kind of the UN Declaration of Human Rights into a single quote, that injustice anywhere represents a threat to justice everywhere. That our very humanity and our faith is tested by the ongoing genocide in Darfur. We are here because we believe that all people are made in God's image. We are here because what is at stake is not just precious lives, but our own very faith and humanity. That common humanity compels us to action. For Darfur forces us to ask that question, who is my neighbor? And what are our responsibilities in this global village for stopping genocide? There won't be any quick solutions or magic bullets, but we know that China can play a critical role, and that there is a gaping disconnect between the very spirit of the Olympic Games and the role that China, the complicity and support that China has shown the Sudanese government. I just want to close with a final quote for you to ponder. It is also a quote by Dr. King, who talked about the urgency of now. He said, we are faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the first fierce urgency of now. In the unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Over the bleached bones and jumbled residue of numerous civilizations are written the prophetic words, too late. China, it is too late for you to continue to be complicit in the genocide in Darfur. It is too late for you to continue to prop up the Sudanese government, to buy oil and provide arms. It is too late. But fortunately, because we are gathered here today, we can reverse this course of history. Do you believe it's too late? No. Is it too late? No. So let's continue to join together, use our voices, and be relentless in our commitment to see China play its leadership role in ending this genocide. Thank you.